The opinions voiced in this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendation for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial advisor, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member F-I-N-R-A-S-I-P-C. Welcome to another one of our video blogs. Today, we are going to talk to a different audience. We've talked about, a lot about retirement, but if you have some young people in your house, if you have kids or grandkids that are starting off in their 20s or 30s and working, this is really geared toward them, so I encourage them to watch this because I have been fortunate, very blessed in fact, to have the best teachers in the history of the world about savings. Now how can I possibly say something like that? It's because when I started back here in 1988 and for the next 30 years, I have been very fortunate to meet and do business with the generation that went through the Depression. I used to think these people were way too concerned about money, even being in the money business. I used to think that maybe the term stodgy or spendthrifts would be applicable to them. But as I became older, and I'd like to think a little bit wiser, I understood the history of many of them foregoing meals, many of them actually seeing one quarter to one third of the workforce with no jobs. Stories of people coming up to their houses looking for some sort of work to get food. And that time period seared an impression on their life that made them the savers they were. This generation, my generation, we've had so much. We have deferred little if any gratification. And it is so important now to understand the reason to put money away. I think those young people right now, millennials, gener the, the individuals in their 20s and 30s, are going to have the hardest time in the history of our country to save for their future. And I'll tell you why. The first is, is that while it hasn't been around since the inception of our country, I do not believe for those individuals in their 30s that Social Security, and possibly in their 40s, that Social Security as we know it today will exist. And let me explain why. And these are just my opinions. I believe Social Security started in the early 30s by President Roosevelt. It might have been 32, 1932, 1933. You can check it out on Wikipedia. But at that time, my belief is, and my understanding is, is that there were 33 people for every one person receiving benefits. Let me go through that again. There were 33 people for every one person receiving benefits. Now, there are approximately three people for every one person getting their benefits. Now, let me explain something to you. You do not have an account at Social Security that says, I've put in this money and this is how much money I'm going to get back. You do not have that account. What is happening is, is the money that's coming out of your check right now is going toward individuals taking money out of the system. Let me put this in perspective. Let's say this individual on Social Security is getting $1,500. $1,500. That means that, think of yourself, and two other people that work for you. For this to balance out, each one of you are going to be paying $500 per month out of your check 
for one person to get $1,500. Do you think that's sustainable? Because I don't. In fact, if you look at your Social Security statement, it will say, and I think it's in the year 2034, that there may not be enough funding for your benefits. That's a reality. The second reason that it's going to be difficult to save for the future is because the cost of living continues to go up. Now, there's two ways I want to point out the cost of living to you so you understand just how much things cost more in the future. The first is this. Ask this question if you have living grandparents. I'm not sure it's going to be applicable to your parents, but to your grandparents. What costs more, the first house you bought or the last vehicle you bought? And I would tell you, I would not be surprised, is that if the last vehicle didn't cost twice as much as the first house. The second example I can give you is this. A tennis shoe. And for those of you who know tennis shoes, a Chuck Taylor high top tennis shoe that is green. Now how does that have anything to do with the cost of living? $9.99. That's what I bought my green high top Converse tennis shoe in 1975. Now, to make it easy, let's say right now they cost $50. And to make it easy, let's say 40 years. So in 40 years, it's basically gone from $10 to $50. What does that mean to someone who's, say, 25 years old? That means if we extrapolate or take what it was costing to what it's costing now, when you, a 25-year-old, become 65 40 years from now, the cost of a Converse tennis shoe from there to there will be $250. Now, you might say that's insane. I'm just telling you, that's why you've got to put down the lattes. That's why you've got to not go out and eat at night. That's why you've got to do some discerning shopping and be able to save for the future. This is real. This is real. This generation also has the hardest time, in my opinion, because you've got cell phones that have a monthly expense. You have internet that's a monthly expense. You might have cable vision that's a monthly expense. You have many, many expenses that I didn't have. So you're going to have to make a very disciplined decision as to what you're going to do. Are you going to spend as much as you have, or are you going to make a concerted effort to save? Now, would you give me that eraser back there, Sharon? Thank you very much. Let me show you some hypothetical these are not guaranteed. This is a hypothetical illustration to talk about the power of compounding. The first one is, let's say you save $50 a month at 8% for 40 years. $50 a month at 8% at 40 years. And you might be saying, that's a pretty high rate of return there. Well, it depends what you invest in. Now, past performance is not a guarantee of future results, but if you just look at the S&P 500 index over the last 50, 60, 70, 80 years, it's averaged well above 8%. In some instances, 12%. 
That's not guaranteed, but I, what, what I wanted to do was take a look at it and give you 50, a, a cut down of less than what it historically has, has performed. But if you take $50 a month, 8%, 40 years, you come up with approximately $161,000. If you take 50% of $50 per month and then increase that by 3% a year, so next year instead of $50, it'd be $51.50 per month, 8% over 40 years. This is assuming you might get a little bit of a raise. You're looking at approximately $250,000 compounding over time is called the eighth wonder of the world. You can do more by starting now, even with a smaller amount, than you can possibly imagine. In addition, what you have to do is focus on what are goods going to cost. You know, retirement is a relatively new concept. It really only started in the history of mankind after World War II. People are living longer. You could live and retire at 65 per chance because that's when Medicare starts. And right now, you might have a life expectancy of 90, 95 years. So you could theoretically be in retirement for 30 years. So it is not how much you make. It's how much you keep. And it's your lifestyle, your deferral of gratification that will affect you and determine how you're going to retire. Ask some of the older people at work. They can tell you. They'll tell you one of two things, I believe. They'll either tell you, I am so glad I got into this retirement plan because it's going to help me retire when I want to retire. Or they're going to say this, I wish I would have started sooner. Be the former not the latter. If we run your retirement plan, come in and talk to me. If I don't run your retirement plan, you're welcome to give me a call and we can still talk. If you think this type of discussion could help a child you have or a grandchild and you're a client of mine, I would value the opportunity to talk to them. Give us a call, email us, I look forward to talking to you next week.